If you're going to go to college, you need to make the most of it for it to be worth it in the first place. But how? I'm Dr. Alex, a researcher and book author working at Cambridge University. And over the past few months, what I did is that I reached out to six of my former students, three of which had a really good time in university, and the other three, not so much. They're firmly in the camp of regretting college and thinking they could have done something better with their time. So I reached out to these people and asked them, how can one make the most most of college. Dear Alex, the one thing that helped me stay on top of things was finding a group of people that would push me to be at my best. I have a hard time motivating myself, but there's something about trying to one-up each other that always got me going. By the way, this is just an empty piece of paper for a dramatic effect. Now, you don't have to take this advice to the extreme, obviously. But when I was a student, one of the most difficult things for me was finding the internal motivation for actually getting things done. I just couldn't do it. I fucking couldn't do it because it seemed like I never had the energy. Everything just seemed so bloody difficult to do on my own. So if like me, you just find yourself in this situation where it's literally impossible to muster up this sort of internal motivation, how about, you know, some external motivation? Study after study after study shows how a little bit of competition makes us try to be at our best. It unlocks some sort of animalistic spirit, right? The drive to say, look at me and what I can do. Look how I'm standing out right now. And it really doesn't take a lot, right? Don't assume that you have to become like a social butterfly for this. One or two friends or colleagues with whom you catch up at the end of the week to give like a progress report or something like that is more than enough. A lot of people tie themselves in knots with pieces of advice like this, but really, whenever you're trying to implement them, keeping it simple is always the secret. And finally, you'd think that people who do their best at university are people who study like all the time. No man. Statistics from Cambridge where I work and like many other places repeatedly show that students with a somewhat extensive network of friends do much, much better in exams and have a much better time in college than loners do, than people who spend all their time like 24-7 studying in the library to no avail. Now, if you're in college or like considering going to college, odds are that you're like way more ambitious than the average person out there. I mean, you're making a risky investment and everything, right? But before you go on to celebrate this newfound statistic, guess what? You're also significantly more likely to be neurotic and anxious than people who don't end up going to college. And you just know that when when neuroticism and like anxiety rear their ugly heads in, perfectionism is always very soon to follow. My arch nemesis. Perfectionism is a disease. There's just no other way to put it. If you're not careful, it's just going to corrupt everything that you end up doing, completely destroying whatever joys or ambitions you might have. In fact, as some of you know, I did write a book about it, a book that helps us be productive and creative, even when you have like an anxious, perfectionist brain like mine. But enough of that, what I always see happen to some of my students is this. They start off things really, really well. They're on top of their assignments, they get good grades, they make friends and have a social life. Things are just sunshine and rainbows for a while until something goes wrong. 
it can be a minor small thing right like getting a slightly lower mark or not being invited to a party to which you are hoping to get invited regardless the one thing that ends up happening because of this increased neuroticism because of the perfectionist tendencies that a lot of college students have that one small thing actually ends up triggering like a tsunami of bullshit in our mind because suddenly you know something went wrong which obviously means that everything is worthless everything is pointless and there's like no hope of improvement and no hope to actually get on top of things is this sort of an amplification of negative feelings that college students are so so vulnerable to So I didn't click record for this part of this video. <coughs> okay, let's carry on. So one piece of advice I always come across online regarding the whole college experience is that students should try to do like a little bit of everything whilst in college. Besides studying, they should like network, find extracurriculars, be social, go to events, and the list really goes on and on. And to some extent, I agree with all this. In fact, one of the main points I made in a previous video, which by the way, you should check out if you haven't. One of the main points I made there is that you do want a well-rounded experience. But you see, many people take this way way too far, especially as you enter your final years of education. Yes, trying things out, experimenting as it were, is absolutely great. It's fantastic. But at some point, you can overdo it. You can end up spreading yourself way, way too thin. If you feel like you're failing your exams because you have 10 parties, 100 interviews and like a hundred thousand charity walks scheduled for the next week you might have a problem you might want to trim some of that fat when i was in college i wanted to do everything wait no that's a lie all i wanted to do was to stay in my room and play pokemon but i had a lot of friends that did want to do like everything and look where they are now. 